Hi guys, how are you today? I'm having a fantastic week. I am continuing with my Celine Dion discography journey and we made it to her sixth studio album, her sixth English language album from 1998 called These Are Special Times. Now this is a Christmas album, obviously, and it's one of the best-selling Christmas albums of all time, having sold more than 14 million copies worldwide. Now I'm looking at the track list and there are 16 tracks on the album. The album is one hour and six minutes. And the only songs I recall hearing before are tracks number five, The Magic of Christmas Day, God Bless Us Everyone, and track number 11, Christmas Eve. And I think that's all I've heard. Now there is one obvious exclusion from the album and that is track number 14, I'm Your Angel with R. Kelly, which I have heard before. But the album on Apple Music actually doesn't include that song and there is a reason. I imagine it was removed because of the situation surrounding R. Kelly. So to honor that decision, I won't be listening to I'm Your Angel in this video. I actually don't listen to R. Kelly music in general, so even if it was on this album, I still wouldn't listen to it in this video. I honestly couldn't care less about R. Kelly anymore, so that's why I'm choosing not to listen to the song. The album is produced by R. Kelly though, he is a co-producer as well as David Foster and Brian Adams. Don't even get me started on Brian Adams, I love Brian Adams so much. But anyway, enough talking, let's get into the album track number one, Oh Holy Night. Already that was track number one, Oh Holy Night. Now, I actually do recall hearing this version of Oh Holy Night before. It does sound familiar, and this was a great way to open the album. I do like Oh Holy Night. It's not one of my favorite Christmas songs of all time, but Celine's rendition of it is absolutely beautiful, of course, and she brings the vocals, and it's very sweet and tender and just very much sublime. Now, it does say here that in recording her own version of the song for her 2020 holiday album, My Gift, Carrie Underwood said that she was inspired by Dion's version of Oh Holy Night, calling it so beautiful and big and classic. Now, I did listen to Carrie Underwood's My Gift Christmas album for the first time a couple weeks ago on this channel, and I did enjoy myself. I just wasn't the biggest fan of her Christmas album. Now, in case you don't know, Oh Holy Night was first composed in 1847, to a French poem called Midnight Christians by Placide Capio. I completely butchered that, I am so sorry. The song was first composed by Adolphe Adam. I am honestly the worst at pronouncing names. So now let's move on to track number two, Don't Save It All for Christmas Day. Alrighty, and that was track number two, Don't Save It All for Christmas Day, and 
This is an original Celine Dion song. She's actually one of the co-writers on the song. I did enjoy the song. I mean, it's Celine Dion. It's a Christmas song. It goes hand in hand. If you like both, if you like Celine Dion, if you like Christmas music, you're gonna like this song. I don't really have much to say about this track other than I enjoyed listening to it. I mean, I could talk about the lyrics as well, but they're Christmas song lyrics. How many people are praying for love, so don't save it all for Christmas Day. I really do like this lyric here, though, where she says, How many people are cried? People are dying. How many people are asking for love? So don't save it all for Christmas Day. So I think what she's saying in the song is don't save all your love and warmth and goodwill and good charity for one particular day of the year, one season, like Christmas, December, the holidays. Spread that cheer and goodwill and love throughout the entire year. So now we're going to move on to track number three, Blue Christmas. Alrighty, and that was track number three, A Blue Christmas. Now, I have heard this song before. I haven't heard Celine's version, but I've heard the original version recorded by Elvis Presley. Now, obviously, Elvis will always have the best version of the song. I did like Celine's version. It's very classical, and it was very peaceful and very relaxing to listen to. Now, speaking of Elvis, I will be listening to his Christmas album later this month, and I'm really excited. I haven't uploaded an Elvis video to this channel in many months, and I am technically still going on my Elvis Presley discography journey, so it's going to be nice to reopen this series with his Christmas album. But I'm actually reading that Elvis Presley didn't record the original version, as I thought. It was actually first recorded by... Doy Odell in 1948. Because I love Elvis's version so much, I don't know if I would go back to Celine's version of Blue Christmas. I probably wouldn't. I would maybe listen to it from time to time, but I don't really see myself going back to this version of Blue Christmas. So now let's move on to track number four, Another Year Has Gone By. Already, that was track number four, Another Year Has Gone By, and I really enjoyed this song. It's probably my favorite track on the album so far, and it was co-written by Brian Adams. You can tell, listening to the song, you can tell it has that Brian Adams touch to it with the production. It does sound like a Brian Adams song, and like I said at the beginning of this video, I love Brian Adams, so... I really enjoyed this song. I was getting a little sad as I was listening to the song because another year has gone by. It just, I don't know, it takes me back to when I was a kid celebrating Christmas and getting together with family and having family dinners. And that's not something I do anymore, unfortunately. It's something I haven't done in a long time. So it takes me back to those happier Christmas days when I was a kid and being around family and opening presents with cousins, aunts, uncles. And one of my uncles would dress up as Santa and he'd come downstairs and greet us kids and give us presents. And 
Just a lot of happy memories that I don't do anymore, unfortunately. It also makes me think of my own mortality because another year has gone by, another year I age up and I get older and I'm not getting any younger and so many 25ths of December, just as many 4th of Julys and... There will come a time in my life where I would have celebrated, I don't know, 60 Christmases and 70 Christmases, and that's so hard to fathom, but I don't know, this song did make me a little sad. But at the same time, the song did make me warm and happy because it made me recall and remember Christmases from my childhood, so I like the song. So now we're gonna move on to track number five. The magic of Christmas Day, God bless us, everyone. Already announced track number five, The Magic of Christmas Day, and God Bless Us Everyone. And I remember the first time I heard this song, I was working my retail job at the time. And for anybody who's worked retail before, you will know during the holiday seasons, December and even some of November, that's all retail stores play is Christmas music. To some people, it drives them crazy, but not me because I love Christmas music. And I remember hearing the song for the first time. I knew it was Celine Dion. I just didn't know the title of the song, so I had to Shazam it. And when I got home, I downloaded the song. And since then, I've been listening to the song every year during Christmas. Now, something I didn't know is that the song was actually written by Dee Snyder from Twisted Sister, which is very surprising. I mean, if you ask me who wrote this song, Dee Snyder would not be on the top of my list. <laughs> oh my god, Twisted Sister. That's another artist I need to listen to. Ideas. I actually watched The Celebrity Apprentice a few months ago, and Dee Snyder was one of the celebrities on the show, so I actually kind of know who he is just from watching him on the show. So to summarize this track, The Magic of Christmas Day, God Bless Us Everyone, is definitely one of my favorite tracks from the album so far. So now we're going to move on to track number six, Ave Maria. Already, that was track number six, Ave Maria, and this was, this was beauty. This was beauty to my ears, and honestly, one of the most beautiful songs ever. How can you not like this song? It's so, I don't even know how to articulate what I feel about this song. I will say though, this song does sound strangely familiar and I was trying to figure out where I heard it before. It does say here that the song was composed by Franz Schubert in 1825 as part of his OP 52, a setting of seven songs from Walter Scott's popular narrative poem, the Lady of the Lake, loosely translated into German. I don't even know what Op. 52 is. What is that? In musical composition, the opus number is the work number that is assigned to a musical composition. Okay. 
You learn something new every day. I finally remember where I've heard the song before from Disney's Fantasia from 1940. Now Fantasia, I recently watched the movie again. I kid you not, a month ago. I do own it on Blu-ray and it's gorgeous. I rewatched it and it has to be one of my favorite Disney movies ever. And this song did play at the end of the movie after the Night on Bald Mountain sequence, it was followed up with this song. And just the transition between Night on Bald Mountain to this song, Ave Maria, was one of the most touching things I ever watched. Not only in animation, but in any movie. So if you haven't seen Fantasia, what's wrong with you? Check it out, please. You will not regret it. Such a timeless song, and I really enjoyed it. So now let's move on to track number seven. Adeste Fidelis, O Come All Ye Faithful. Okay, so that was Adesti Fidelis, O Come All Ye Faithful, and O Come All Ye Faithful is probably one of my favorite Christmas songs of all time, and I was not disappointed. I loved everything about this song, the choir, and the production, the organ. Now, O Come All Ye Faithful is a Christmas carol from... 1744. It says that the song was composed in 1744. So this song is almost 300 years old. I really liked the parts with the organ. It was reminding me of when I used to go to Midnight Mass on Christmas Eve. It was a yearly thing me and my family did. We would go to church at about... 11 p.m. on Christmas Eve, and we would attend Midnight Mass. And then we'd come home, go to bed, wake up, and it would be Christmas morning. Now, there were times where we would open presents after coming home from Midnight Mass. We would only open a couple presents, and then the next day was Christmas Day, and we'd open the rest of the presents. And I'd come home from Midnight Mass before going to bed. I would leave out some milk and cookies for Santa. I would also leave out some carrots and lettuce for the reindeer. And funny story, I would go to bed on Christmas Eve and I would wake up on Christmas Day and I would go into the living room and see that all the cookies were gone and the milk was gone also. So Santa ate the cookies, he drank the milk. Yay, I was so excited. But I actually went into the kitchen and I opened the cookie jar and I saw that the cookies were put back into the cookie jar. So that kind of led me to believe that Santa wasn't real. That was one of the inklings I had when it came to me not believing in Santa anymore. Santa put the cookies back. Why would he do that? No, my mom or dad put the cookies back. They didn't even eat the cookies. How rude. And one of the other things that led me to believe that Santa wasn't real anymore is that my dad came home one day, one evening, and he carried a whole bunch of bags, and I was able to see through some of the bags. So I saw some of the things he bought, and I noticed that he bought some toys for me and my sister. And on Christmas morning, I would open one of the presents that said, from Santa, but the present was one of the gifts that I saw my dad bring home one evening through one of the bags. 
So that also led me to believe that Santa wasn't real and it was just my parents, which was a very sad moment in my childhood. I also used to snoop for presents as well. Along with my sister, we would go into my parents' bedroom when they were gone and we would snoop around for presents that they haven't wrapped yet and we would always find the presents. So on Christmas morning, it was never really a surprise. But anyway, let's move on to track number eight, the Christmas song, Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire. Okay, that was track number eight, the Christmas song, Chestnuts Roasted on an Open Fire, and wow, I totally forgot about this Christmas song. I don't remember the last time I heard it. It's really beautiful. I do like this Christmas song. It's not one of my favorites, but I did like Celine's rendition of the song. It's very classical. It was reminding me of Barbara Streisand. It says here that the song was originally written in 1945. I don't really have much to say about this song other than I just liked the classical sound to it and it was very pleasant and soothing to listen to. So now let's move on to track number nine, The Prayer. Now this is a collaboration with Andrea Brocelli. Okay, that was track number nine, The Prayer, with Andrea Brocelli, and this was amazing. I've never really listened to Andrea Brocelli before, but he's fantastic. He's a great opera singer, and I love his voice so much. This was a great collaboration. I really enjoyed the track. It does say here that The Prayer won a Golden Globe Award for Best Original Song, and was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Original Song in 1999. It also received a Grammy Award for Best Pop Collaboration with Vocals. Such a sweeping, beautiful song, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. So now let's move on to track number 10, Brahms Lullaby. Already, that was track number 10, a Brahms Lullaby. Now, I have heard this lullaby quite a few times throughout my life. I just never knew the name of it, but now I know. It says here that the song was first published in 1868 by composer Johannes Brahms, 
and it's one of his most popular songs. This was another beautiful classical song, and I like how overall this album is very classical sounding, and I love the production of the whole album so far. So now let's move on to track number 11, Christmas Eve. Alrighty, that was track number 11, Christmas Eve, and I remember hearing this song for the first time about 10 years ago when I was working at my very first retail job, and of course, it is retail, so during the holiday seasons, my store was playing a whole bunch of Christmas music, and I remember hearing this song for the first time and always loving it when it came on to play. I remember doing a whole bunch of returns. Now, returns is something that a cashier would do during the off time when there weren't a lot of people shopping in the store. A lot of people were returning things, so there was a cart filled with returns, and someone would have to take the returns back onto the sales floor, find the departments, and put it back on the shelf. So that's what I had to do once in a while. So as I was putting the merchandise back on the shelves, I was kind of dancing down the aisles when this song came on. I was such an idiot. I remember my coworker not liking this song. She would always say that damn Celine Dion song. So since then, I've been listening to this song every single year. I always like it, and it's one of my favorites from the album. So let's move on to track number 12. These are special. These... <sighs> I can't talk right now. Um, let's move on to track number 12. These are the special times. Alrighty, that was track number 12, These Are The Special Times, and I really liked the choir in this song, I liked the build-up, and it was nice. It's not one of my favorite tracks on the album. If I'm gonna be honest, I probably wouldn't listen to this song again, I would probably skip over it. It was written by Diane Warren, so I feel a little sad because I do like Diane Warren, I love her music so much, I love her songwriting, but I wasn't the biggest fan of the song. It didn't really resonate with me, and it didn't really capture my attention. It's a nice song, I suppose, but I just don't think it's very memorable. So now we're gonna move on to track number 13, Happy Xmas, War is Over. So Already that was track number 13, Happy Xmas, War is Over, and I do recall hearing this version of the song before, Celine Dion's version. The second she opened her mouth, it was all coming back to me. And the original, of course, was sung by John Lennon. I really like the John Lennon version, but Celine Dion's is just as good in my opinion. It says here that it is a protest song against the Vietnam War. And since then, since the song's release in 1971, it has become a Christmas standard. This is one of my favorite Christmas songs of all time. Lyrically, it's very powerful. It's probably 
one of the most powerful Christmas songs you can listen to. And of course, one of my favorite parts of any version of Happy Xmas War is Over is the choir. In the original version, John Lennon's, there was the Harlem Community Choir, and in Celine's, there was um, a church choir. So the choir in any version of Happy Xmas is always one of my favorite parts of the song. So now let's move on to track number 14, Feliz Navidad. Ooh, or just getting hot. Alrighty, that was track number 14, Feliz Navidad, and this was, this was a lot of fun. I do like the original version of the song from 1970 by Puerto Rican singer and songwriter Jose Feliciano. That's probably always going to be my go-to version of the song, but I did like Celine's version. It is a lot of fun. I was listening to this song a couple days ago. I have it on my Christmas playlist, and every time I listen to my Christmas playlist, I always listen to this song. So now let's move on to track number 15. I'm going to try and pronounce this as best I can. Le Clacho du Hamu. I know I mispronounced that, I'm really sorry. I did look up how to pronounce this, and I'm still struggling with the pronunciation, so I am trying, and I really do apologize. Alrighty, that was track number 15, La Clocho du Hamu. I mispronounced it again, I'm so sorry, I am trying, I'm just having a lot of difficulty pronouncing the title of this track. Um, I did like it, even though I don't know what they're singing about, it is in French. The only part I could sing along to was the tra-la-la part. <laughs> I like it. It's a very classical song, and it fits in with the rest of the album. It was also written by Johannes Brahm, who also wrote and composed track number 10, Brahm's Lullaby. When I was listening to the song, I just wanted to get up and just start dancing. It's a very beautiful song. So we have come to the end of the album, track number 16, I Met an Angel on Christmas Day. Already, that was track number 16, I Met an Angel on Christmas Day, and this is one of the few up-tempo fun songs on the album, and I really like the saxophone. I'm gonna be honest, I probably won't listen to this song again. It's probably one of my least favorites on the album, and I just wasn't the biggest fan of it. Now, it looks like this track wasn't part of the regular release of the album. It was actually added as a bonus track on streaming editions of the album, like the one I'm listening to on Apple Music, in 2020. So this song was recently added to the track list. I am curious to know if it was added because they took off I'm Your Angel with... R. Kelly. So that is all 16 tracks of These Are Special Times by Celine Dion, and I really enjoyed myself 
If you like classical music, if you like Christmas music, if you like Celine Dion music, you will like this album. I really enjoyed the production. It's very classical sounding, and I liked the collaborations on the album as well, such as... Andrea Porcelli. It's also a nice mix of original Celine Dion Christmas songs as well as classic covers from some of our favorite Christmas songs of all time. There were a couple songs from the album that I probably won't go back to. I enjoyed listening to them for the first time, but they're not go-to Christmas songs for me anyway. But there are still quite a few songs on here that I would put on my Christmas playlist. So what did you guys think of the album and which songs are your favorites? And I think that's all I wanted to say. This is just a great solid Christmas album from Celine Dion. So if you're in the holiday spirit and you're wanting to wind down to some classical yet modern Christmas music, I definitely suggest These Are Special Times by Celine Dion. So now that we're done, These Are Special Times, in my next Celine Dion video, we'll be moving on to her greatest hits album from 1999 called All The Way, A Decade Of Song. And there are seven new recordings on this album. I have heard a couple of them before, but there are songs from this album I haven't heard yet, so that is the album we'll be checking out next in this Celine Dion discography journey. So thanks for watching, guys. You can find me on Instagram, you can find me on Twitter, you can message me, you can tell me other artists I should check out. I'm open to any artists for any decade. You can find me on Apple Music, you can check out my playlist, and so on and so forth. So, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Take care.